a lot of modern practice traditions have a particular technique, but the forest tradition doesn't. John Lee has his way of teaching concentration, and John Mahabua has his, John Cha has his. And as for developing insight, they all have their own approaches. What they have in common is more an attitude. And the attitude that was developed by monks living alone in the forest, learning to be self-reliant. One of the main ingredients in that attitude was learning to be resourceful. When you're alone, facing difficulties, you have to be able to think up a solution to the problem. One learn how to frame the problem in a useful way. Learning how to come up with a solution using your ingenuity. As I've said before, John Fuang would often talk about being observant and learning to use your ingenuity as the two most important ingredients in your meditation. Because a lot of times people will have problems that will come up and they don't fit into any text that you may have remembered. And your teacher is miles away, days away back in the past. So what are you going to do? Well, you try to frame the problem and then come up with an answer. Try something out. Now being resourceful here doesn't mean that you, just anything goes. Because you're being tested in an environment where if you're too experimental and too off the track, things get dangerous, both physically and mentally. Which is why there's more than just being observant and being ingenious. And John Lee, when toward the end of his life, he was talking about taking the Buddha, the Dhamma, and Sangha as your refuge both on an external level and on an internal level. The external level basically gives you examples of what to do and what not to do. As I was saying last night, a lot of the Buddhist teachings are not just what you should do as a meditator, but also things you should not do. Those are things you have to keep in mind. The examples of the Buddhist disciples, the examples of the Great John stories that would be passed down about what did and didn't work, you want to remember those examples. Take them to heart, and then try to develop their qualities within you. It's those qualities you develop inside. Those are your refuge. And in line with what the Buddha said about developing your refuge by working on the establishing of mindfulness. And John Lee focused on the establishing of mindfulness as the way in which you develop this refuge. And you have to remember that his approach was interesting and in that he focused not so much on body, feelings, mind states, or mental qualities. I mean, he talked about those, but his real emphasis was on the three qualities you bring to this practice. Ardency, alertness, and mindfulness. These are the qualities that underlie your ingenuity and underlie your powers of observation. They give you a framework to look at things from, a place to stand. And an idea of what should be done. This is what the mindfulness is all about, to remember what we're here for. We're not here to entertain ourselves. We're not here to play around. You play, but within in the rules. Like any game, you have to know the rules if you want to get good at it. The rules here being, if you want to put an end to suffering, this is what you got to do. Certain things you have to avoid, certain things you have to develop. You keep that in mind. And then you find that there are large chunks where the stories you've learned about what works and what doesn't work and the principles you've learned, there are things that fall through the cracks where you may not be sure how they apply. That's where you've got to bring in the quality of ardency, which includes both your effort that you put into it and your ingenuity. You try to do this well, and if you can't figure out from what you've learned in the past how to do it well, then you try to think, well, what might be 
the problem. You go back and reframe the problem a bit. Maybe you're not a, understanding it properly. And then try to come up with a solution, and then you test it. And this is where your alertness comes in to watch. Is this really working? So these are the qualities that make you self-reliant, ardency, alertness, mindfulness. They're driven by heedfulness, or the realization that if you slip up, there can be consequences, so you have to be careful. And these are the qualities that anybody who's going to live in the forest is going to be self-reliant is going to have to develop. Heedful means you're aware that there are dangers. This is why you have to be mindful and remember what the dangers are. And also look for ways that you can act to avoid the dangers. And keep working at this. Because no one else is going to do the work for you. And no one else is going to be able to protect you in every case. They talk about a John's having a duty of protecting their students. Well, the way you protect them is to give them teachings that will make them safe, will remind them of dangers. Like the danger of sensuality. I was reading today someone saying that now that we've come in a, into a new culture, Buddhism has to change and old teachings that are not viable have to be discarded. And they're using this idea to justify the idea that maybe we should start celebrating the body and celebrating sex again. As if that were a perfectly legitimate way of reinterpreting the Dharma now that everybody's changed. Well, how much have we changed since the time of the Buddha? You know, if we'd evolved so we had totally different bodies in that time and totally different minds, then maybe we might want to rethink things. But we're still the same human beings with the same problems, and sensuality is still the same problem it was now than it was then. So you have to realize certain things are off-limits. As the Buddha himself said, when you're practicing the establishing of mindfulness, you're in one territory. Sensual indulgence is in another territory. That's the dangerous territory. You have to remember that. You go wandering off there, a hawk can come down and catch you, or a hunter can come and set up a trap, and then you're done for. If you've lived in the woods, you realize okay, there are lots of dangers out there that you have to keep in mind all the time. In certain territories, you say, I'm just not going to go there because it's too dangerous. Because the territory that you do have to develop, there's plenty of room for you there, plenty of room for ingenuity, plenty of room to enjoy yourself. I was reading a new sutta I had never read before. And the Buddha was making a comparison. When you're a little kid, you play with some things, and then as you get older, you play with other things, and then as you start practicing, you play with jhana. And this becomes your, your entertainment, like the image of the elephant. Well, the pleasure and rapture of jhana, this is the way the elephant would scratch himself with a branch. This is how you allay your itch. And it's a safe pleasure, in the sense that it doesn't cloud up your mind, and it doesn't get you in debt to other people, because when you're following sensuality, this has to be that way, and that has to be this way, and you want this out of that person and that out of the other person, you're in debt to them. Whereas when you're practicing finding your pleasure in being here in the present moment, this is a safe place to be. You're not incurring any debts. You're not wandering into territory that's not yours. This is what you have to be mindful of, that there are dangers in the practice, and there are dangers in your own mind. But we do have instructions that we can trust. It's just learning how to apply them properly to what your problem is right now. That's where the ingenuity has to come in. It may seem paradoxical in a way. Here's a tradition that holds very 
strictly to the vinaya. It has a very clear idea of what is dharma and what's not dharma, and yet they say, be ingenious, be resourceful. But there's no paradox at all within the parameters of what's skillful and what's not. You have to use your ingenuity and figure out what's skillful right now with this particular problem. Because sometimes when you're dealing with lust, say, or dealing with anger, a certain approach will work, but tomorrow the same approach doesn't work anymore. You're not going to give up on the idea of trying to overcome your anger, overcome your lust. You say, okay, that's your principle that you hold in mind. That's what you're mindful to do, and that's what you're ardent to try to do. This is where you bring in your ingenuity. What would be a new way, a more effective way, this time? What exactly is triggering your lust? What exactly is triggering your anger? Try to be alert. It's in this way that these three qualities, ardency, alertness, and mindfulness, make you self-reliant, make you somebody you can depend on yourself. Because as I said, this is work that nobody else can do for you. We would like to think, well, I've made a mess, maybe someone else will come and clean up the mess. You made the mess, you've got to clean it up. You're the one who's created this tangle. You're the one who has to untie it. No one else can make you skillful. They can teach you the basic principles. You keep those in mind. But then you have to use your own ardency, alertness, and mindfulness to take those basic principles and make them work for you. But fortunately, these are qualities we all have. These are the qualities that the Buddha himself developed to gain awakening. And there's no place where he said that he was any kind of special deva who had special qualities that nobody else had. These are all qualities that any human being can develop. You're a human being. You can do it. They talk also in the text of people who are heedful, ardent, and resolute. It's a slightly different angle on the same issue. You keep in mind the fact that there are dangers in your mind. You're ardent and trying to overcome them. And you're resolute. You just keep coming back, coming back, coming back. You don't give up. When you find something that works, you don't get complacent. You watch, okay, this solution I made just now, is there any danger around that solution? You keep at this, checking things from all sides. And this way you can survive the, the jungle of your own mind, because you're developing qualities you can depend on.